Hello and welcome to Black and White Cairo Ministries, where Christ is meeting you in a personal view. I'm Father John Roberts. Thank you for joining me today as we read from the Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke, the physician, the apostle of Jesus. This is the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 10. It's a story about that wee little man named Zacchaeus. Let's begin with a word of prayer, shall we? Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone or of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Remarkable that in that culture, very much like our culture today, people were very self-righteous and they were easily offended and they defended what they thought was right and what was wrong. And when someone opened their mouth and said something that was scandalous, they were quick to say, what a terrible and sinful person that is. That's a mouthful. But it's only to express that the fact that nothing has really changed in the course of time. This historical story that was over 2000, nearly 2,000 years ago is just further attestation that Jesus works in the realm of human nature. That people really don't change. And Jesus is patient with people. He's also very loyal to loving people who are earnestly doing what it says in the collect, which is to run without stumbling. Zacchaeus was a man who ran as far as he could until he hit the wall. And the wall was the self-righteous. The wall were the people that cast him out as someone that was beneath them, someone that was a sinful, sinful man. Zacchaeus heard a great deal about this rabbi named Jesus, and there were throngs of people thousand people perhaps that came out and this crowd made it impossible for a short man like Zacchaeus to be able to see Jesus. Was he trying to see Jesus um, for the reasons other people wanted to which was what's this all about? What's he going to say next? What's going to come out of his mouth or what's he going to do? He probably wanted to witness that for himself. What he didn't know is that Jesus would single him out because he stood out when he climbed up that tree, that sycamore tree. He's up there, hanging onto the branch and looking. And Jesus could have focused on any of the people that were right there immediately in front of him, but instead his eyes searched way in the periphery to see who needed to hear his message. Not just the people in front of him, but all the way back. And as far as he could see was a man in a tree. And he knew his name. His name was Zacchaeus, and he was a tax collector, and he was rich. What is a rich man doing up in a tree? Couldn't he have an entourage push people away and just work their way into it? That's not the richness of a tax collector. He didn't have such support. He had a lot of public scorn. A lot of people hated him because he had taxed them four times because they were in debt, and they couldn't repay it. And here in the end, when Jesus calls out to him and says, I'm going to give you a place of honor by having me over for lunch, so that I can actually talk with you about my message. It must have been a great presentation because Zacchaeus, his life was changed. 
And he says, look, Lord, from this moment on, I'm going to give half to the poor. And if I owe anybody out there, I'm going to give them four times. He was accused of taking half of the money from all the people. He was accused of taxing people four times what they, what they owed. What a reversal. What a change for this man. Can Jesus change you? Can Jesus change me? Is there a sense of volition here, of our own free will, to where Jesus says something or does something that we didn't see before? Maybe we had to climb up in that tree. And when he singles us out, and he does single us out, you know that's true. You know Jesus calls you, and you know he sees you when you don't think you're being seen. Is your life changed? At that point in time, are you willing to do an about-face change in course so drastic as the one that Zacchaeus went through? Are you able to turn your life once more to Christ and be disciplined in the behavior and a life in which he's called you? The people grumbled. They grumbled when he invited Zacchaeus into his life. That's not fair. We were here first. We are the poor. We are the ones. Why are you giving any type of attention to this man is because Jesus knew that if he was going to make any change in this world he had to affect all people not just the poor he had to go after the people with the resources and he knew in order to affect change for the good he was going to have to get and incorporate those who had talents and resources and skills in which to do it but he knew that it was an uphill climb. He knew he had to climb up a height himself because people don't easily change, do they? They don't. Zacchaeus was wrestling with something inside. He didn't feel good about his life. And that's where Jesus meets all of us. We know from our conscience that something's not good and we're caught up in the crowd. But Jesus, we hear that you're near us. We, we know that you're nearby. If we can just see you, so I don't know what that tree is today that you need to climb, but climb it. Call upon the Lord. Call upon Him and ask for Him to be with you as you run the race and pray that you don't stumble. Amen. I hope that on this day that you receive a godly message and that you're able to have a bit of a change in your life and to be able to express your love and commitment to serving our Lord with others. For truly, if we are going to go forth and multiply the kingdom of God, we have to be spokespeople and we have to share that good news with others. Will you consider that today? Be like Zacchaeus. Give half back. If anyone owes you, or if you owe others, will you be willing to forgive and move forward? This is the message that God has given me to give to you today. As always, go forth in the name of Christ.